Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Arkansas in the United States. Now I know what you're thinking. First things first, why is it pronounced like that? Why is it not Arkansas? Why is it not Arkansas? Etc. Why is it Arkansas? Let's just get that out of the way first thing. So one of the many indigenous Native American tribes that lived here were known as the Quapa. And the Algonquin tribe lived more easterly from here had a name for them that I'm not going to try to pronounce, to be honest, because I'm not quite sure how they pronounced it. However, the French and the English had their own ways of pronouncing the Algonquin word for the Quapa Native Americans. The French pronounced it Arkansas. The English pronounced it Kansas. And that's why we have those names. Arkansas is spelled with an S at the end, a silent S, because it comes from the French version of an Algonquin word. And that is that. That is that. Now you know. We can set that aside. Arkansas is bordered by Missouri, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, a little bit of Texas here, and Oklahoma, sorry, Oklahoma. It is part of the southern states. It's probably the most northerly southern state culture you can find. If you go farther north, it gets a bit more Midwest, right? It's like it's technically southern, but not like Southern, Southern? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying to be honest. Arkansas has some very interesting geographic features to it, though. The main one you can see here is the mighty Mississippi River making up this entire border. Very important waterway, not just to Arkansas, but to the United States as a whole. Very big flowing river. I saw it um, when I was in St. Louis, which isn't too terribly far away. It's close, but not quite. Big, big, powerful river. And it does flood quite frequently, which does affect Arkansas, the areas around the river. But there is also the Arkansas River that slices through the state. I don't know, it, it ends over here, but going the opposite direction. There you go. I just want to find it. So it flows through the state cutting it in half till it flows into the Mississippi. And that is what the state is technically named after, the river being named after the Native American tribe. Arkansas is also quite mountainous. The Ozark Mountains dominate the northern half of the state, and that's broken up into various mountain chains, like the Wachita Mountains here. You can see the Boston Mountains up there. And these mountains create some very, very remarkable landscapes, lots of beautiful cliffs, lots of fascinating caves and waterfalls, and there's rivers all through them. And even more interestingly, there's a lot of hot springs in this region. Hot Springs National Park is just over here by Hot Springs, Arkansas, which I'm going to mention again because my family's from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Keep that in mind for later in the video. But very interesting. Not a lot of hot springs in the United States. It's interesting that they're so abundant in this corner of the U.S. There's also a huge open pit diamond mine near Murfreesboro, which is right here, Murfreesboro. It is the only diamond mine in the United States 
and the only diamond mine in the world where you, yes you, can go and dig in the dirt yourself for diamonds and keep what you find. That's really fun. I would like to do that someday, even though it sounds very messy. But it, it's just interesting that there's something about this region below the surface that creates these wonderful things like the hot springs and the diamonds that bubble up to the top. Very interesting geographic area. The northern half of Arkansas is very, very mountainous. The southern half is a lot flatter because it's dominated by the Mississippi River floodplain over here. And the geography of the United States just naturally gets lower as we go south into Louisiana, which is probably the lowest state in the U.S. Don't quote me on that, but that seems right. And let's see, the, the capital is Little Rock, right here, pretty much smack dab in the middle of Arkansas, right on the Arkansas River. And I think that's it for geography that I wanted to mention. We'll play around on Google Earth and see all the sites for sure, so we'll go more into it then. But let's talk about the history of this state. Like I said, there were many Native American tribes that lived here. I already mentioned the Kuapa, but when we explore on Google Earth, I'm going to show you a Kado site. And ancient peoples, it said on Google Earth, they're from uh, their artifacts they have are uh, from about the year 1000. I need to slow down. About the year 1000. And of course, there were many more all throughout the area here. Some of them were even part of the Mississippian mound building cultures along the river here. The first Europeans to enter Arkansas would have been the expedition team of Hernando de Soto, which was apparently going quite well as he was traveling through the southern United States, but it all seemed to fall apart once he hit Arkansas and he actually passed away here. And the expedition just gave up and left, going down the river, I believe, to the Gulf of Mexico and sailing back home. It's, it's where it all went wrong, unfortunately. But, oh, sorry, that was in 1541, I forgot to say, when his expedition came through Arkansas and ended in Arkansas. French explorers first entered the area in the 1670s. And the first French settlement was established in 1686. It's kind of near where Little Rock is now. It's not on my map, but I'll show it to you on Google Earth. It was called Arkansas Post. And there were many Arkansas posts along the Arkansas River, evidently, that the French established. And it became part of the Louisiana Territory, the big French region that they claimed in the Americas here. But they would very famously sell that chunk of land to the Americans in 1803, known as the Louisiana Purchase. So not just Arkansas, but my goodness, like a huge swath of this area was given over to the United States. In 1819, the territory of Arkansas was established. This was all Louisiana back then, so they separated Louisiana from Arkansas. And Arkansas was made a state in 1836. And there was, I'm trying to figure out how I should say this delicately. There's two things I need to talk about in this period that I have to word carefully because of YouTube and just general. So at this time, in the United States, many Native American tribes were being forcibly relocated, mainly from the East Coast and the South, the Florida region. And since the United States just got all of this new land, they moved many of the tribes to what's now Arkansas, in the state of Arkansas. Of course, the tribes that were already here were forced out to build settlements for the Americans and forced into the new reservation zones for the Native Americans. So 
that's a very dark chapter in American history, but even darker than that, it's because of where Arkansas is located, it was officially deemed a slave state. So the people here were allowed to legally own black people's property, and they certainly did. And therefore, when the Confederacy was being formed, Arkansas jumped in very early 1861. They joined the Confederacy of the United States and therefore joined the Civil War against America. And there were many battles actually fought in Arkansas. I think one of them is on here. P Ridge, I think it's called, up here. But there were many throughout the state. And very famously, the Confederacy lost the Civil War. And Arkansas was reinstated into the United States in 1868. And thus began the period of Reconstruction, which was when the United States attempted to come into the southern states to reconstruct it. A lot was destroyed, including in Arkansas. And so it was a not just a rebuilding, but creating a a culture that would allow people who were previously property to have their own lives, usually as sharecroppers, which means they owned a small plot of land on a bigger plot of land that was owned by a white person. And usually harvesting very tiny crops like peanuts, watermelon, things like that. Little tiny seed things, you know, since it was a small plot of land. And the white population of these areas, including Arkansas, weren't very happy about that. As you can imagine, I'm trying to figure out how to very carefully say this. But you know what I'm saying. They, they were racists, right? And they weren't appreciative of these northerners coming in and telling them how to live their lives and how to behave to people who were a different skin color than them. And a resistance came up in multiple ways, but legally in Arkansas, and many other states in the South, they established what are known now as Jim Crow laws, which were segregation laws that discriminated against African Americans, restricting how they could vote, where they could do business, or even just like go into a store, where they could go to school, what jobs they can hold, etc., etc., making it legal to discriminate against others. And that all came to a head after the passage of Brown v. Board of Education in 1954. It's something that we in America, when we're in like middle school and high school, we have this drilled into our heads, Brown v. Board of Education, but I know there's a lot of foreign viewers out there. So Brown v. Board of Education was the Supreme Court decision that officially stated that schools could not be separated by race, and that schools that were separated needed to integrate. And by that they mean allowing black children into white children's schools, since the black children's schools were usually very subpar compared to the white children's schools, right? And of course, many racist white people weren't pleased about that. And it all culminated in Little Rock in 1957, where at Little Rock High School, nine teenagers who were black enrolled, and they were met on their first day of school by mobs of angry people screaming at them and threatening them. The National Guard had to be called in to protect the children. The governor stepped in and just decided to close the school until, you know, these students dropped out. But of course that became a huge national issue. All eyes were on Little Rock and they were forced to eventually reopen the school and allow whoever wanted to enroll, to enroll, no matter what skin color they are. And 
it was just one of the many early battlegrounds of the civil rights movement to allow equality for all people. Of course, Arkansas today is, you know, very integrated. Um, it's still not perfect, but most of the South is not. Let's be honest. Arkansas has always been an agricultural state since its very beginnings. It still is today for the most part. Arkansas never really fully recovered from the destruction of the Civil War. It has always been the low end poverty levels of the United States. Lately, I would say like if there's like a poverty line Arkansas is just below it. There are areas and states that are way worse than Arkansas, but Arkansas is definitely not in the, like, top economic states of the United States. It's still mostly small towns and farming communities. But there's also a lot of retail industry in Arkansas, very famously up here in Bentonville. This is where Walmart was created and where Walmart headquarters are today. The Walton family being one of the wealthiest families in America, and they live here in Arkansas. Also, Tyson Chicken is headquartered in Arkansas as well. It's a huge chicken processing factory, I should say. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it. Actually, no, I promised you a story. So at some point in probably, I want to say like the 1800s, my family came from Ireland to the United States and they settled in Arkansas, in this area here, in what we know, or what we call the boonies. And so the boonies are typically like the most rural part you can get in America, like no electricity, well water, subsistence farming, cousin kissing, you know, that kind of thing. But I imagine my family were farmers in Ireland, they came here and just kept doing what they knew how to do, and just built their own little farm in the woods and just kept farming. And uh, there's no records of my family until the 1920s. They lived in the boonies. They lived in the middle of nowhere in the woods. Until my grandfather left to marry my grandmother. We have their marriage certificate on file. And they lived in hot springs. And my grandma told me a story one time about how there were some troublemakers in hot springs. Some rowdy teens who were bored and out looking for trouble, right? Like stealing pies off of windowsills kind of crime, nothing too serious. And one of those gangs was a boy named Billy, and she caught him a few times stealing vegetables out of her garden. She had to chase him out. And that boy, Billy, grew up to become the 42nd president of the United States. So yeah, Bill Clinton stole vegetables out of my grandma's garden. He has never issued a public apology, <laughs> nor does he have to. It's fine. I'm just kidding. But uh, they moved to California in the 60s, I believe. And I, I've, my family's not returned to Arkansas since. I've never been to Arkansas, but I probably should. I'm hoping that um, now that it's the 2020s and the U.S. census releases census records that are 100 years old to the public. I'm hoping that in the coming years as they release, you know, the 1925 records, 1926 records, that I'll find more information about my family, hopefully, so I can investigate. And I need to do a, a genetics test to see, because uh, it's rumored that there's Native Americans in my family from the the Boonies family. So that needs to be done, but that is my personal connection to Arkansas. <laughs> so with that being said, let me turn out the lights and let me grab the tablet so I can show you around this really neat state. 
So here you can see Arkansas. And let me actually let me move the mic. There we go. Let me zoom out so I can show you exactly where Arkansas is located in the world, if you're not quite sure. So here is the United States, Canada, Mexico, the Caribbean. Here's Arkansas, so you can see there's the Gulf of Mexico, Louisiana, and just north is Arkansas. And from up high, you can see the Mississippi River floodplain. All of this you see here is land that's been flattened and got all moist and squishy from the mighty Mississippi. You can see a majority of it is here in Arkansas very lowlands, very wetlands, bayous technically, French term from Louisiana. And I think we should start with the forests. Because unfortunately, and this is a call to any Arkansans watching, um, do better <laughs> with Google Earth pictures. If you're in like Little Rock or Hot Springs or Bentonville, any of the major cities, Go out and take some cool pictures of local sites and upload them to Google because they're rotten here, okay? They're really bad. Especially at Hot Springs National Park, I wanted to show you the hot springs. There are no pictures of the hot springs of Hot Springs National Park. So we won't be looking at that, but they are there. So any Arkansans going up and watching this video, that is your mission. Go to the beautiful sites of Arkansas, take some pictures, upload them to Google. So that we can all enjoy your state, please. But these here for Wachita National Forest and the Ozark National Forest are fantastic pictures. Let's take a look. Very bright green forest, isn't it? An old settlement there looks like of some kind. Tower there so you can climb up and see for miles and miles around. This is about the Native American relocation to the area. Big, beautiful rivers. And this gorgeous rolling landscape here. It's so beautiful. Very uh, rural America. Even Puppy here thinks so. It's pretty great. Beautiful, lovely forests. Big dam. But I want to show you pictures of Ozark here because these are some of the most famous photographed sites in Arkansas. Arkansas is known as the natural state because they wanted, apparently I read, they wanted to convince tourists to come and see the natural sites of Arkansas. And this is one of the most famous. Can you see this ledge here? Looking out. Incredible. Very, very photographed place in Arkansas. Here's some of the incredible caves. We'll look at one in more detail, but there's caves and waterfalls and springs all throughout this area. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful woods. Let's see. Look at these neat formations here. Look how far out you can see. Absolutely amazing formations here. And beautiful tree colors as well. The mist rolling in, like the Smoky Mountains, which aren't terribly far off. I mean, they are, but not terribly far off. Look at this. So this is a cave. That was my cat. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was, this is a cave with a waterfall in it. How neat is that? Another ledge here. That seems a little orange. It's just a beautiful place. What an incredible park. Let's look at... I guess we'll check out the caves that I told you about. But I have to find them. It requires things to pop up, so I know where I am. There we go. Hello, Google Earth. Oh, don't come back. There we go. Hello? Can you... Can you help me out? Do you see it? Hello. Somewhere up here. Anything? Okay, we've got Mountain Home here. I know that's a big town. Let's 
that? A fish archery, that's cool. It's not being very helpful at all. Why would it do this to me? This is another case of it working perfectly while I was rehearsing. And it just completely falling apart when I film. Hello? I can't find the caves above. They're underground. Can't really do much. Tree area. We're gonna find them if this will cooperate. But I'm probably gonna have to restart. Good lord. One second. A few moments later. Blanchard's back. Oh no. <laughs> it was right in front of me. Thanks, Google. Man, you're really helping me out. Okay. Anyway, I can't see the caves from above. I was really looking for it. But here are the Blanchard Springs caverns. This is a gorgeous cave. Look at these incredible formations. Waterfalls outside. So wonderful. Look at that. That would be so fun to tour and walk around. Look how smooth that is. Years and years of water dripping down it. Look at these stalactites. Sorry, the stalactites. Um, they're incredible. It's like a curtain. It looks like fabric. It's so detailed. waterfall, my goodness, it's like a painting. Let's see, oh, there's the outside. That's very ominous. An old settlement there, some kind of old home that's been abandoned. Look at that rock, wow. So those are the caves. Let's make it easy on myself. We're gonna check out Little Rock, because I know that will pop up. Yep, there we go. And like I said, the pictures here are horrendous. We're gonna check out the Little Rock High School. Let's see if I remember where it is, what side of the river that it's on. I think it's over here. A few hours later. Okay. That's up here. It was on this side of the river. I was just way too far north. So here is Little Rock High School right there. There it is. Big complex here. And it looks like they're renovating a lot over here with the sports areas, I assume. But there is a historic center right here and a memorial garden for the events of the Little Rock Nine. What an imposing building. Huge high school. There are lots of memorials in the garden across from the school that you can visit. There we go inside. There we go. There's lots of exhibits about what led up to the Little Rock Nine and the events during it. The gas station nearby. Memorial bench there. Beautiful art. You can see the National Guard there protecting the students. All they want to do is just go to school. I mean, kids already don't want to go to school. But, you know, it's the most important thing for children. And everyone should have an equal opportunity at a proper education. That's all these children wanted. To have them punished by adults, you know, screaming at them. It's, it's just, I mean, who's the real children in this situation, right? But let's get out of here. That's Little Rock, the state capital. Even the pictures of the capital building are very exciting. Let's head over to the diamonds. We're upside down. There we go, I would have been so lost. Maybe this will load for me. There's hot springs up there, but the pictures there were also very terrible. <laughs> Do we need to find... I think it's up here. Murfreesboro. There 
this. And over here we have the Crater Diamonds State Park. See it? All carved out. This visitor center has the best pictures. Crater of Diamonds State Park. It's a little play complex, old barn there. There you can see the field where you can just go with your own shovel and bags. There's a little play area for kids. You're about to become part of history. It says like you're a prospect now. Look at the diamonds and you can go out here and dig all you want and keep whatever you find. You can mush diamond hunting tips. Diamonds found in the crater may be white, brown, or yellow. I've never seen a brown diamond. I've seen yellow diamonds and of course some white diamonds. What is below the surface? See, that's what I'm asking. What is happening that creates such an interesting landscape in Arkansas? Something is happening underground in this state all of these treasures. I love this fountain. I should have mentioned in history, many people came to Arkansas because they thought the hot springs had healing powers, which I think in a way they do. Like there's something so relaxing about naturally hot, clean, pure water. I feel like it could do a lot. All right, I'm going to end this at this cool museum I found. Now, Hot Springs has the Gangster Museum of America which is cool, but it uh, doesn't have to do with the state of Arkansas. Um, Bentonville has um, a big Native American museum, but it's literally for like all Native Americans, not like ones in the area. It's a great museum. It looks so cool. Um, but it's not about the Native Americans in the area. It's about all of them all over. But this place is a archaeological site has the world's largest diamond also seahorse there you can see here don't be alarmed by these bones here i'll show you in a minute the kadoha of the kado peoples here's some of their artifacts and this sign here is stating that you know this area contains skeletal remains but all the bones that you see are replicas that have been placed exactly where the real bones that were found are. So it looks like the real deal, but the real ones have been preserved and are being, you know, studied and analyzed. And trying to be as respectful as possible to the peoples that used to live here, and to the best they can. Paleo period, some arrowheads here. A bison fossilized skull, how incredible is that? statue. See, here's one of the buildings that they've built around one of the dig sites that they found. You can see it there. I think that's really neat. Beautiful artifacts here. But I am going to end it here. Since Google Earth is really struggling today. And my cat has decided to make a bunch of noise behind me. I hope you can't hear him rustling around in his box and doing some laps around the house. It's soon o'clock. So we're gonna end it here. But I'm sure there's many other sites to see in Arkansas. Go ahead and drop in the comments below any other places you think that we should check out in our own time when we like to explore the world of Google Earth. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this style of video, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series. This is the tail end of America week, every video this week. It's about the United States, and we're about to do a complete 180. And next we're going to Russia. We are going to the northernmost point of Russia next week. We're going to see polar bears, we're going to see walruses, we might even see some nuclear test sites. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video to be relaxing and educational. Hope that you have a good, good, good